listening to the lying legacy corporate corrupt mainstream media try to explain that this race between Donald Trump and Joe Biden is going to be a nail biter. It's going to come right down to the wire because after all, when you look at the electoral map, there are some states that are potentially in play for Biden. That there is the chance Texas might lean toward Biden this time and that Florida is definitely now purple. To which I respond, bullhock. But Tucker Carlson and Vivek Ramaswamy, they have a different take on what's going to happen. That it won't be Joe Biden at all. It's going to be a two-person race, but not between Joe and Donald Trump. Stick around. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! You can't handle the truth! Hi, this is Pastor Marty. Welcome to the Afternoon Drive. If you are a subscriber, please smack the bell, click the word all. That gives you notification of all of my rants, my ravings, and of course, my undeniably flawless reasonings. If you're not a subscriber, please do so. But please, like and share this video. That's how we get the word out that we're here. Welcome to the Afternoon Drive. I'm not even going to bother to show the clips of these so-called experts and talking heads on these political talk shows on the cable news channels talking about how this race is really tight and though there are certain places where Donald Trump is really pulled away, but you you, you got to expect that because nothing but uh, know-nothings and Neanderthals live there, you know, that, that, that MAGA people. But, uh, wow. You know, Texas could be in play for Joe Biden. Texas is not in play for Joe Biden. Well, how do you know, Pastor Marty? Uh, you know what? I don't even have to look at a poll to know that Texas is not in play for Donald Trump. Well, you know, there's a border in Texas, a border that millions of illegals are crossing and coming in, and Texas is having to deal with it to the point they're putting them on buses and sending them to New York City. Trust me, there is no love for Joe Biden and Democratic politics in Texas. Austin is the only libloon bastion they have, and in case you haven't noticed, there are a whole lot of more Texas than just Austin. So, that said, that's delusional. Trump will take Texas. Trump is going to take Florida. Trump is trouncing deep state Ron DeSantis in his own state. Trump will take Florida. I promise you. I lived in Florida for seven years. I can tell you, the only place that has a Democratic chokehold over it is Miami-Dade County. Yes, Orlando, Democrat, but Orlando doesn't have uh, enough of the, the, the population uh, under its control to, uh, to sway the state. And the rest of Florida is very much conservative. And you get into that panhandle, they're what we call a century ago conservative. So, uh, no, um, uh, Florida is not going to go for Joe Biden. And remember, now, Ron DeSantis likes to take a lot of victory laps over this, but uh, where where was considered the, the freest state during the pandemic? And we're talking about the lockdowns and shutdowns of Joe Obama Biden when he was mandating, you know, that you're going to get the vax and we have a, 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 a pandemic of the unvaccinated. Remember, we're all, where was the place people wanted to get to? Florida. So, no. No, no, no. Uh, Florida is not leaning in the Biden direction. So, you know, these guys, when you, you, you look at it and they're trying to make these polls look like, oh, it's going to be close. Biden's at like, you know, 210 and Trump's at like 209. It, it, no, it, it's not that. If this stays Donald Trump versus Joe Biden, this is an absolute blowout. 
Donald Trump will get a bigger landslide victory than Ronald Reagan did over Walter Mondale. Now, what is actually going on? What is the deep state actually up to? As the Supreme Court is getting ready to step in, and basically, and I've told you this before, they're going to have to decide that Donald Trump can stay on the ballots. That number one, this is a federal issue when you're talking about insurrection, so states don't get to make this decision on their own. And since Donald Trump has never actually been formally charged with insurrection, has not been found guilty by any court of insurrection, uh, Donald Trump is going to be able to stay on the ballot. So uh, that's pretty much, we, we see where the, the cases are going. The backlash has only made Donald Trump uh, much more of a formidable candidate. And so uh, that, that plan to take him out that way has failed. Joe Obama Biden can't even remember what day of the week it is. He can't get through a press conference without literally reading the notes that are placed in front of him. And everybody knows it's no longer a press conference. It's really just a photo op set up. And, you know, uh, when he's asked questions like about anything, the economy, the border, everything's great, everything's wonderful. And then, no joke, gotta, gotta tell you about what my dad said. And I'm... I'm telling you the truth now. So what my dad said, Joey. And then, you know, he gets done and he walks off the platform and into a wall. That's that's Joe Obama Biden. And his poll numbers are absolutely cratering there that he's he's done. And they know that he can't beat Donald Trump. So who will it be? Gavin Newsom, Michelle Obama. Well, Vivek Ramaswamy was on with Tucker Carlson, and he's got a unique take on this. What have you noticed about the kind of subtext to this race? What's actually going on here, do you think? Yeah, well, look, I've been convinced for a long time, Tucker, that this was not going to be a standard Trump versus Biden race. Right. There's just been enough staring you in the face that made that obvious, right? You start with the trials and the civil trials and the prosecutions, and then they go to the non-prosecution and illegal removals from a ballot without trial on the Trump side. The thing that fascinated me about the Biden side of this, though, is you also see some of the same dynamics. The documents case for Biden trotting itself out after years long ago in the Senate. You see a lot of other things with Biden. Why is the Hunter stuff coming out now when this has been known for seven years? And so where I thought this was going was Gavin Newsom or Michelle Obama or whichever other puppet they're trotting out to replace Biden. But one of the things that's become clear to me, so that's where I thought this was going. It was not what was meeting the eye, for sure. I think what's become clear to me now, I'm in the thick of this GOP primary, is that the real puppet they're trotting out isn't Gavin Newsom. It isn't Michelle Obama. I was wrong about that, actually. I think the true puppet masters, the thing about them is they're fundamentally nonpartisan in nature. There's a few things they care about. Keeping the foreign war machine humming is high on the list. Keeping the administrative state's control of the United States is also high on the list. They found a much more convenient puppet within the Republican Party itself. It's not Gavin. It's not Michelle. It's Nikki, actually. And I think that if you just follow exactly who are the very people who are paying to keep Donald Trump off the ballot, who are funding the lawsuits that keep Trump off the ballot, the Reed Hoffmans of the world funding lawsuits against Trump, the Larry Finks of the world, king of the woke industrial complex, CEO of BlackRock, it's just obvious and hiding in plain sight. Who are these people propping up? It's not Biden, and it's not even Gavin Newsom. It's Nikki Haley within the Republican Party itself. And I think that that makes for a very convenient front man, because then they actually have absolved themselves from any allegations of partisanship or Democratic partisanship against Donald Trump. It's, they can say, oh, no, 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 we're not partisans. We're actually bipartisan. Actually, the deep state, and I would say the managerial class more broadly, is fundamentally nonpartisan. They have their core objectives, and Nikki makes for a far better Trojan horse to actually accomplish that objective than anybody else. And so when you look at the dynamics within the mega donor class or otherwise, it is now crystal clear to me, Tucker, that let's just get to exactly the plan that they have. I mean, I've been alluding to this for a long time. I wanted people in the campaign trail and others to be able to draw their own conclusions. I don't want to stuff my views down people's throats, but I think it's just become crystal clear that it's now sh staring everybody in the face equally, obviously, that they want to narrow this down 
by they, I mean the system, the bipartisan system, wants to narrow this down to be a two-horse race between Donald Trump and Nikki Haley. They want it one way or another, by hell or high water, take Donald Trump out, eliminate him from competition one way or another, and prop Nikki Haley up to just waltz straight in to keep the war machine humming and to effectively keep the censorship industrial complex and the administrative state intact exactly where it was in the post-9-11 Bush-Cheney era. Well, it is certain Nikki will give them all the wars they want. And Nikki really is a globalist. And yeah, Nikki really does want to have a national ID so that they can censor what you're up to on social media. And remember, remember, it was lying Mike Pence, the enemy within the Trump administration, who went on Laura Ingram right as everything was really ramping up with the pandemic. And she asked him, are we going to have to have some type of digital proof of vaccination to get into a... And he said, that'll never happen. That'll never happen. That'll never happen. That'll never happen. And yet it was... Ha- I mean, Pence lied through his teeth. Remember, he was he and he and he was the one that brought Fauci to the forefront of all of that. That, that was a Mike Pence pick. It was not a Donald Trump pick. That was Pence. Because... He and Fauci had worked together on a pandemic in Indiana. And so this whole idea, it's been really put into warp speed under the Biden administration of a digital currency. They want everything digital. Everything digital on you. So that when you don't comply with something, whether it's you haven't had the 147th booster of the whatever, They can turn off your credit, turn off your bank accounts, turn off your driver's license, turn off your passport, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. Track and trace you everywhere, always. Nikki Haley, totally good with and down with that. Because again, and I have been saying this, there isn't a nickel's worth of difference between the typical Democrat and the typical Republican. These people don't have a soul. They don't really have a core ideology or um, uh, uh, what's the word? I, I'm, 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 I just literally went blank on the word that I need here. But you, they, they, they don't have a core set of beliefs. They don't have convictions other than endless war, globalism, and power and money. And they don't care whether you got a D by your name or an R by your name. And if somebody with a D by their name is willing to forward that agenda, fine, and then they can introduce their, their you know, woke culture bull hawk. And if somebody with an R by their name is willing to forward the real agenda, fine, then we'll put up with, you know, their their more limited view of wokeism. So they're good with Nikki Haley. They're good with Gavin Newsom. But remember this, Gavin Newsom, though he really wants it, he's not going to be allowed to replace Joe Biden. Why? Because, well, you got Kamala Camilla, thinks she's a hottie Harris in the way. And they are not going to replace the woman of color with another guy who's pale and male. That's just not going to happen. But Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley, quite the Trojan horse. It's interesting. I don't know uh, if Vivek is prophetic on this one or if this one's really way out in left field, but it is interesting. And I told you 2024 was going to be interesting.